Let's get straight into our results service now, and namely Blue Label Telecoms, whose first half numbers were released earlier today. We'll get straight into it because we've got two CEOs in the studio in Johannesburg. It's the brothers Levy, Mark and Brett. Let's have a look at some of these numbers, gentlemen. Headline earnings per share increasing by 26%, and that's after excluding a once-off income receipt in the comparative period, so slightly skewed there. But you had a decline in headline earnings per share by 5% after including the once-off income receipt. Increase of revenue up to 9%. Nine and a half billion. Overall, how was the period for you? Yeah, so really happy with the six months to November. I think a lot of uh, what we tried to achieve, we did achieve, and really very bullish. You know, the once-off receipt we did make a uh, obviously very clear in November that it was a once-off. So to go into normalised earnings, yeah, very happy. 26% up and uh, very positive on the way forward as well. Mark, we've had Brett highlighting that uh, you know what you wanted to achieve, you have achieved. What were some of those targets set? What were the milestones over this period? Look, we we, we focus on embedding our technologies, ensuring that our distribution. Um, network is sustainable. You know, as a group, we're doing over 400 million transactions a month. So, ensuring we've built s significant capability and capacity. Uh, our products, our core products, like electricity and airtime, are increasing. So, you know, bedding down the, the, the core stuff and then looking for the, the, the next generation income. Mm -hmm. Brett, what about the, um, the, the overseas expansion? I mean, you, you've increased your stake in, in Mexico. You've got uh, interest in India as well. But it seems to have stopped there. Do you have any more international ambitions? Not at the moment. You know, we really have our hands full with the India and Mexico. We're really happy with our distribution expansion there. You know, in Mexico alone, we're growing by six to 7,000 points of presence per month. You know, just to put that into perspective, it's like going to 10 or 12 cents in cities every month, out doing, out doing every single store, training. So we really grown an aggressive place in Mexico, aggressive pace in Mexico, and really happy with what's happening in India. So it doesn't mean the rest of the world we're not able to go to. We definitely do. The products definitely available and popular there, but we really got our hands full. We don't want to be under-resourced and concentrating heavily and focusing on them. Of course, you've got your hands full where profitability is coming under strain in those territories. You've actually incurred losses as a result of exposure to those, um, those markets. So where are the challenges? So, you know, we've always said for the first couple of years of Mexico, we're definitely going to lose money because we're really concentrating on the distribution. It's really interesting because if you add that back, the losses, and not that you do, but if you add them back and have a look at the core South Africa, taking out the ones off, we obviously, we probably grew at about 35, 36% if you took out the, the losses. But we continue to make the losses. We've uh, projected to lose more. We really want to grow it quickly and aggressively, and then it will come. Mm -hmm. So very much with our vision. Well, let's just stay with that if we can now. I mean, is there any chance that you might say, well, if these margins, uh, if this doesn't improve uh, in whatever time period you assign to it, that you're going to get out and just concentrate on Southern Africa? No, uh, Lindsay, from our side is, you know, they, they core to our strategy, our vision, India, we've already been there 10 years. You know, we, we lost, uh, you know, a small amount of 2.5 million rand, but we have built a distribution network that's unparalleled in India. If you consider that the whole of India, there's 680,000 villages and they only have 450,000 devices deployed, and we've got 130,000 of them, we're definitely doing the right things. There's a lot of margin compression in India, so by diversifying our offering to include more financial services, uh, we're doing the right thing. So I, I think people shouldn't just look at, yes, you've made a, a two and a half million rand loss yeah. for the period, you should look at what the network's capable of doing and building for the future and having access to over a billion plus people. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, take that story and put it up against what you're seeing unfold in Africa, because overall your profit margins have risen uh, what 0.4 percent just over that to 6.8 percent sure so once again you know ensuring that what we do we do it better um, we've built a network that allows you to add additional products and services at very small incremental costs so every time we layer on additional product um, we get incremental increase in margins. So if you look at our mix in our, in our products, you look at our mix in our profit streams, you know, 40 uh, odd percent of our profits now come from selling commodity, yet 47 percent of our profits come from uh, annuity income and 8% comes from interest received. And to put that into context, when we listed a couple of years ago, to a mere five years ago, 50% of our profits came from interest received. So we've managed to diversify our business to compensate 
for the lack of profitability in other areas. Mm-hmm. What about the risks to your business though? This is one thing that, uh, that has always uh, interested me. Is it, uh, is it competition, or the threat of people coming in and muscling in, or um, continuing to do so rather, or is it technology? I mean, will technology eventually mean that your, your, uh, your business as it stands right now might actually be um, obsolete one day? So it's a great question because we really play in an exciting space at the moment. This prepaid world is really the harp of uh, what everyone's talking about. So we've seen a lot more competition coming in, but fortunately for us, we've seen the competition come in in vertical. So Blue Label has the horizontal, the whole the whole range. We have the electricity, we have the bus ticket, we have the train ticket, we have the lotto, telcos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Where our competition is coming in, first of all, is in vertical. Someone who will compete with us, maybe just in telcos or just in electricity. So we watch the verticals obviously very carefully, but we try to offer the whole rather than the part. From a technology point of view, you know. Technology always changes, to be honest, and everyone says they got the best technology or they got the best wallet. You know, we really think we've got an unbelievable development team. We've, we've been up there from the start in a lot of things. Quite strangely, this little company in South Africa is leading the world, developing things for the first time. So technology is something we always have to look at. we always got to make sure we're there up in the front. And of course, if we miss a couple of things, to make sure that we can copy them quickly and make sure we back up at the top. So we watch it carefully, but very confident where we sit. It's all proprietary, which is extremely important. It all sits in-house. Of course, we've had Brett highlight, Mark, that uh, you're looking at this more horizontal exposure. Uh, what sense then with that hori- uh, horizontal exposure are you getting of the state of the African consumer right now? Because those are, are trends that you're going to have to pick up on to develop your products and services moving forward. Look, uh, it's, it's a very simple logic. If you can take first world products to a third world consumer, and allow them to transact in a manner that they are accustomed to, then you've got a willing buyer, a willing seller. So we're not prescriptive in terms of when you should shop and how you should shop. We just should ensure that our network enables any products to be bought. So a good example would be a, an event ticket. You know, in the past you might have to have caught transport to go and buy your ticket. What if you could buy it as easily as you could buy a time? That saving might allow you to do a lot more. So by us making the product a lot more convenient, by us taking product to the consumer and not the other way around, is really encouraging spend, is really allowing people to do things they could never traditionally do. So we're not prescriptive whether you want to pay by debit, credit, EFT or cash. Generally our market's cash. We just need to ensure that we can enable all these things conveniently.